Hello, good evening, Judah here. That was quick, hello. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. How may we be of service this evening? Well, I guess any information on why the vessel had been feeling so exhausted today, earlier, and maybe for a few days, and what we can do to energize her. Yes, it is still the element of backstabbing. There are people talking, and these words have power. And they are energetic drains through the heart chakra from behind. There has to be some kind of way of protecting that. Surrounding her in white light. Yes. Putting up some kind of mirror where whatever it is that hits her in the back bounces back to the person. Well, we would say this vessel is far too nice. Too nice. Too nice to her own harm. I've been telling her that forever. She finds it very difficult to be unkind. Sometimes you have to protect yourself. That is correct. This is a large vast construct of consciousness in women. Women are required to be nice. If they are not nice, they are not provided for. They are not protected. They are not given safety or asylum. If women are not nice, there is no recourse of justice for them. Women who are not nice are called bitches. bitches or snitches and you know what they say about snitches snitches get stitches and so women who speak up for themselves or tell the truth who confront gossipers and attackers are disowned her. I don't need her to be nice. I want her to be the real person that she is in the hell with everybody else who cares what they say. Maybe it's time we start to change that. She made good moves this week to directly communicate with the one who was doing the gossiping and the betraying. And of course, as cowards do when confronted, when confronted, when given the opportunity to communicate, to argue if necessary, and to resolve the issue, the coward who was doing the backstabbing refused. To answer. And this is the way people will speak up when they when they do not have to say it to your face. They feel a lot of boldness and freedom at a typewriter, at a keyboard, with a phone in the hand, but then when they have to look you in the eye, 
the story is different. And so this person who was doing the backstabbing is a coward and does not care enough about their own professed personal values to work through the issues and come to collaboration and resolution. And so there is silence from their end. Now your wife offered three times, very graciously, one, two, three times to be available to talk through the issues. And this is a, a terrible danger, a, a, a shame in this society that given a keyboard in the hand, one may make all manner of accusations with a complete lack of consciousness, even, even a deadened conscious to the fact that there is someone else on the receiving end, a real person with a real heart and real feelings. And this one, this vessel was called insensitive for crying and immature. And we think this is utterly ridiculous that human beings be expected not to show emotion or feel feelings. Utter, utter, utter nonsense, nonsense. And, and we, we, we are stepping up now here in this moment in defense of this vessel and others like her. And we are so grateful that there are still people on the planet who care enough about others, who care enough about the heart, who care enough about the condition of their emotions and others to shed a tear. And what, what, what a horrible place this would be if people ceased to cry. They are repressed and they don't have the courage to go into their pain and clear it. There is a scripture that says two, two, two scriptures about tears. One that says every tear is collected in a bottle by the Lord, the Lord of hosts collects every tear, every tear in a bottle, and tears are sacred. And there is a second that says, when one steps into nirvana, into heaven, the Lord Christ is there to wipe every tear from the eye. Every tear, every tear shall be wiped from every eye and this is the realization of enlightenment and understand that the lord christ the lord christ and michael speaking here on his behalf is present ever present to wipe every tear every tear from every eye and so anyone who thinks they be righteous Anyone who thinks they be loving, Christ-like or compassionate, who cannot, who cannot and will not abide by the tears of another, e e is in deep and dark self-deception. And as Judah so aptly said last night, law of attraction, yes. Law of love foremost. And so we would say to everyone listening here who is a part of 
the cultures of enlightenment, cultures of spirituality. Is the law of attraction a universal law? Yes, it is. But careful, careful, dear ones, how you use this law. Careful how you apply it. Because the law of love is supreme above all. And any who lose compassion at the tears or pain, distress of another is out of alignment, even if that one has caused their own suffering and despair. And in a tear, in a tear you may see, if you look carefully into the tear, you will see the vast of universal consciousness and you will see clearly now again this vessel did not handle herself perfectly but she handled herself well enough and she has more room to grow here in speaking up and allowing herself to be angry because I will tell you Michael I am very happy to overturn tables. It does not offend me one bit to overturn what is a disgrace and a dishonor in the house of God. And there will come times when this vessel will express that sort of authority and call her whatever you wish to her face and she will not back down. Now, women do not have to act like men. But women are women and women can and do have authority and they have the God-given commission and backing to speak with their God-given authority. And it is in no way contrary to their femininity. And what we are asking of both women involved in this interchange is that they begin to use this authority and boldness in truth and not in accusation with intent to harm or shame. When this vessel was a younger woman and she had a spiritual father and she would have a particular issue, whatever it might be, and she would call him up for instruction for words of wisdom, insight, and comfort. And she would share whatever was on her mind. Many times conflicts or, or drama perhaps created by her own spiritual blindness or egoic tendencies or, or fears or perhaps even immaturity. And she would listen to the gentleman she would listen to his words carefully and feel very comforted and directed by the words. And sometimes when she would hang up the phone, an hour or two will pa would pass and she would say, Oh my, I see. Now, I just received some firm discipline from my spiritual father. And indeed, he had disciplined her quite directly. However, it never felt to her, it never felt harsh or unloving. It never felt judgmental or accusatory, shaming or degrading. It always had the quality of love and grace 
And it always had the result of her feeling freer and lighter than she did before. You see, when a child is disciplined by a parent, disciplined well by a loving parent, the child feels relieved of their guilt, the guilt and shame of what they have done wrong. The guilt and the shame leaves in the discipline. But when the father or mother disciplines out of immaturity and wickedness, the child feels more guilt and more shame as a result of the discipline. And so in this particular instance, the woman we are speaking of had an intent to discipline this vessel, yet she does not have any God-given authority over this vessel. In fact, she's quite stuck her nose in where it does not belong. And when two adults are in the room together, they are to stand on equal footing in equanimity, in equality. And one is not to direct the other unless the other has specifically asked for their help. And to utter the words shame on you is a shameful act in itself for it implies that shaming another will somehow produce a better outcome, a better behavior, a better directive. And this, this woman said the word shame on you. And we really cannot think in this moment of a more wicked thing to say to someone else. For there is no shame on any of God's children. For all are doing their best, with very few exceptions. And shame is no companion to love. And even more shameful than that is that the words be associated with a woman of God, supposedly coming from the mouth of a woman of God. And we will tell you that women of God do not say such things. Women of God such as these shall slide off their pews into a hell of their own making. And there they shall burn in their own shame and despair. Now, this vessel is expressing our message here with courage, and it is also her own, and there will come a an accounting an accounting for spiritual abuse perpetrated in the name of Christ and let today be the beginning and the reckoning of such accounting for i am michael and there are many beings with many perspectives, but mine is this, I keep an account of all things. And I balance every ledger. Now this word of caution we would say in regards to any who interact with this vessel. If in the darkness of one's heart you speak to her in secrecy, then perhaps what you say 
will be exposed in the light. So if there is some part of you, some darkness that you want to keep to yourself, some darkness that you treasure, that you wish to keep as your own, best not come around this vessel. For you might get caught with your pants down around your ankles, as they say. I don't have any pants on, but thanks for the warning. <laughs> Okay, Pleiadian sisters here, and we would like to bring a transmission. This is a specific transmission for those who have been wounded by backstabbing and gossip. And this transmission will be effective for both known and unknown gossip and the content is not important only the healing that is needed and so as you receive this transmission we ask that you open up your heart chakra through the back of your heart chakra center in between your back shoulder blades in the mid center of your back and allow healing flow in from the back through the front of the heart chakra. And we hear you, dear one, we hear you saying, yes, but some of the things that this one, these ones said of me, were true but you see dear that does not matter it does not give them the right to make statements out of hatred malice judgment or fear because the truth without love is illegal in our realms. Ina 
nai ni ne a a a se ka ai ni ne u u ta ka a e che ai te ke o na a ni e e e o ta ka a a a ni o na o che ai te ka o ya ta ka ai ni ni ne o ye che o a sa a a ka a e te o o o o ka na na a te o che te o ta ka a a a a te ya. Yeah, so what I'm seeing, uh, this is Watal of the Pleiades, and I see that um, in when she lived in the Upper West of North America many lifetimes ago with her, with the indigenous people, if someone had an accusation to bring then they made they called everyone together in the community and everyone stood together in the circle and the one who had the complaint or had the offense or issue that they wanted to confront they did it with everyone present and the elders present and addressed their complaint directly to the person and this is what Michael was speaking of, that it's time to stop talking behind one another's backs and bring these things out into the light, into more of a community platform of truth where the truth and the complaints are heard by elders who can make wise judgment. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yes, and Watal's calling on mothers and sisters and daughters to to come together and begin to demonstrate commitment and faithfulness to each other in support of one another and protection of one another in all instances without judging or undermining one another but standing for the truth in love in intimate communication and having the courage and determination to work matters through to the end. Oh, ache ndaka ite ite ota. Ha, ache chika a u tike ene a ene u ya a a tike ota. Chinya ka te e and she's asking us to return to the old ways that are more tribal and native to indigenous peoples and the wisdom of the way they lived together in relationship. Na <laughs> And she's asking us to lay, for sisters to lay aside jealousies and to celebrate each sister's victory as her own and each sister's pain and hurt as her own. 
Ta <laughs> Mm. Oh, Danny, ne, oh, 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 um, all the men, all the men and the young men were were killed, were slaughtered, and only the boys, very young boys, um, survived, and the women. And she's saying that if we had experienced such a thing as this, we would understand the power of sisterhood and the support of women for one another and how that love and care can heal and sustain. Mm. 